Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be explaining how regenerative braking works in brushless permanent magnet synchronous motors like the kinds you find in electric bikes and some electric cars. So this is something which has puzzled me for quite some time and I was thinking it would require an extra bridge rectifier and DC step up converter which would be attached uh, to the motor. So what actually happens is the inverter and motor act together as a DC step up converter. So basically the then the three coils of the motors actually act as an inductor uh, that would be in a DC boost converter and the switching MOSFETs or IGBTs act as well, the switch, like the diode and the switch that you'd find in a DC boost converter. So I was thinking that the switching schemes would be pretty complicated, but it's actually really simple. So, um, say for instance, the car or bike is just going along. Uh, there's no power going into the motor or coming out. And you've got these three sine waves uh, which can be measured at the motor phases. So all that happens is um, when when you lift off the throttle the car will start regenerating. Now what happens is these three uh, bottom MOSFETs or IGBTs are just shorted out. Uh, the whole motor is shorted out very briefly uh, through PWM several times a second. So um, it's just these three bottom MOSFETs or transistors which are all switched on at the same time and that shorts out the motor briefly. When that shortage is removed uh, there's a pulse there's a pulse of electricity which comes back out of the three coils and then those are rectified through the body dials of the MOSFETs or transistors and then they go back into the battery. So it's actually really simple. Uh, they're all just pulsed on and off at the same time. Now I'd imagine that what would happen is um, the duty cycle of these pulses would vary depend on depend on how much regeneration is demanded, um, <clears throat> and it might actually be more complex than this. And like the inverters you'd find in the Tesla or other cars like the BMW i3 because I'd imagine that maybe the frequency and duty cycle uh, change in, the, in uh, most electric cars just to absolutely maximise efficiency as much as possible um, but that seems to be basically how it works so it seems to me like uh, it would be a very simple thing to implement into electric bicycle controllers just by reflashing the firmware to them somehow Sadly, this is far beyond my skill set, um, but I would like to set up a test rig to see just how much power this switching scheme can produce uh, and see if it actually really does work. Um, but I would need to actually somehow develop on a microcontroller using an Arduino environment uh, an inverter uh, which could perform this sort of switching scheme uh, which could spin up the motor with a flywheel on the end and then just switch switch the bottom half of the three bridges and regenerate like this. Um, I've no idea how to do this at the moment and I will study it quite a bit more. Um, I suppose I could make, make sort of some sort of add-on module where rather than the top three there being transistors or MOSFETs, there'll just be three diodes and there'll just be three MOSFETs at the bottom which I would just uh, pulse on and off like that. That's really simple, but actually using the whole thing and making an inverter from it, uh, that is far more complex. So uh, if anyone could help or point me to some code where something like that has been implemented, then I'd be, I'd be really grateful. Now for things like induction motors, this wouldn't work because there's no magnets in the rotor to generate any sort of uh, 
and voltages across the phases. So those inverters just reduce the output frequency um, and it causes a drag on the rotor and that somehow regenerates back into the battery. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that, that works though um, because that, that one's a little bit beyond me. Um, but I imagine it's, it's something like this. It's just that shorting effect across the the magnetic fields somehow boosts the voltage. Um, but yeah, the, the induction motor one confuses me a little bit. But this this one here is definitely clear to me because it's just like a a DC boost converter. Um, when when the system's operating as just a normal motor. Um, it's like just a DC buck converter. It's just like effectively stepping down the voltage. So yeah, that's all there is to it, really. Um, uh, the previous video, well, one of my videos, it's testing that huge electric bike controller which I got from a Chinese seller. Um, I was in contact with them asking if they could ever add regen to it, and they say it's a very, very difficult thing to do. So. Um, at that time I didn't have this data sheet so I'm going to send this publication to them and try and get them to somehow implement this feature um, because for electric bikes this would be amazing because you would save money on uh, brake pads uh, because you have to change them quite often on electric bikes because they're quite heavy so uh, that would probably be the main benefit over uh, the extra like 10 or so percent you would get back for range so not only that you're not going to wear out the rims of your tires as much either or even wear out your disc brakes if you have them because I'd imagine that disc brakes are, ex are more expensive and complex to maintain 